So what does the Mandelbrot set have to do with database design? What does the Sipinski triangle have to do with database design? So in both structures, we have this effect of self-similarity. You look at smaller zoom-ins of that structure and you have a similar structure as in bigger areas of the same structure. That is the self-similarity aspect, the fractal aspect of those structures. Here it's more evident in the Sierpinski triangle. If you look at one of those triangles here, of course, this triangle here is exactly the same triangle as this one and as this that one. And of course, this is the same as that one, depending on the specific recursion level. But it's super similar. And again, you can go into this one, you have the same three triangles again, and so forth and so forth. So what does that have to do with database design? Well, in databases, we see similar patterns in the systems. And I'd like to phrase that as a pattern. So the fractal design pattern says, given a method X operating on granule Y. Method, again, may be a data layout, maybe an index or an algorithm. Y is a component of a larger granule Z, so Y is a subset somehow. In our Sierpinski triangle, one of those smaller triangles, let's go back. So here that would be Y and, and the entire thing would be Z. Y is a component of a larger granule Z. Then the solution is you adapt X to solve problems for granule Z as well. Yeah, in other words, if you're on one level here of the system, Let's say this is a larger granule Z, and Z consists of multiple smaller granules. Let's say this is Y1, and let's say this is Y2. What we know is we have a method X that operates on granule Y, let's say Y1. Then it's likely that it also operates on granule Z as well. That is what this pattern is about. So what are the advantages? Same code, same tests. If you're really in the situation that code you originally designed for one granule, designed to work for one granule, and then you can adapt it somehow to work on other granules as well, that might save you some effort in writing the code and maintaining the code and testing the code. So there's no need to reinvent the wheel. That's also a guideline when designing systems. Rather than trying to invent something entirely new, look first at different granules. Could it be that the same problem or similar problem already occurred on another granule of the system? How was it solved there? Can that solution be adapted to the granule I'm currently looking at? That is a design goal. That is something you should keep in your heads. Drawbacks are, well, it's not perfect. It's a design pattern. It's a design guideline in a way. So you can't, usually you can't use the techniques one-to-one. -one. So the solution is not necessarily perfectly suited to work on multiple granules. Maybe you have to tweak it a little here and there. Well, and interestingly, we had already a similar pattern. It should ring a bell. We had this pattern, the all levels are equal pattern when talking about the storage hierarchy. So that pattern levels is respect to the levels in the storage hierarchy. So a storage level like L1, L2, L3 caches, registers, DRAM and so forth. So that pattern said that whenever you have a technique on one level of the storage hierarchy, it's likely to work on other levels as well. Yes, you have to adapt it, you have to tweak it here and there, but very often it's the case, especially for buffer replacement techniques. What we learn here in this video is that the all levels are equal pattern is just a special case of the fractal design pattern. The fractal design pattern is more general. This sounds very abstract, so let's look at some examples. Well, we already learned about some examples. We already had examples of fractal design. For instance, in the video on nested rate levels, what did we have? We had two levels of self-similarity, so to say. We had those black boxes. I said there's a black box here and the black box there, and, the, and those black boxes are connected by a rate, and the rate happens to be in configuration rate level one. Inside such a black box, there might be another rate configuration, another rate system, and that's called rate zero. So inside the box, there's another rate level. You can nest those levels as many times as you wish. This is already an example of fractal design, of self-similar design, because 
on this granule, this is a Z granule, so to say, and th those are the, this is a Y1 and this is a Y2. Here you have a similar idea, use rate, yet in another level, as on the higher level granule. So we have two levels here and those levels are self-similar, they are fractal. And we extended that already in the data redundancy pattern. There was another video where I ex explained to you. So if you have data centers, let's say data center one and data center two, again, you can consider those data centers as black boxes. One way of using those data centers is to keep all the data in sync. So in case that one data center is separated from the internet, you still have all the data available in the other data center. So as long as one of the data centers is connected to the internet, everything is fine. So in normal operation, both are connected to the internet. And whatever you do, you store all the data on both data centers, which basically means those two data centers are connected by RAID 1. They are connected by RAID 1 configuration. Inside the data center, you might have a nested RAID. Yeah, let's go back to the previous example. So maybe this is inside the data center. We have a nested RAID level. So in the data center example, we are already at three different levels, three RAID levels. First is among the data centers. Inside, then we have this nesting as depicted on the previous slide. And you might even think about a fourth level, a fourth level of self-similarity using RAID. That is, assume that here on this level, we don't use hard disks but assume that we use SSDs. If you look back at my video on SSDs, I explained that some of those devices use RAID 5 internally to be able to survive failures or for error correction, they use RAID 5. And then we are at four levels of self-similarity. So at the bottom, there is the SSD using RAID 5. Maybe it's connected in a RAID 0 configuration which is then connected in a RAID 1 configuration, that's level 3, and then there's a fourth level. So the outside level is RAID 1 connecting those data centers. That is what self-similarity in database design is about. And we will see more examples in the lab, especially with respect to data layouts and index structures. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.